welcome to Treasured Inheritance Ministry. I'm Yosef Ben Avram, and I'm glad that you have joined me today for this all new teaching that I've entitled The Walk of the Sadiq. You know, brothers and sisters, I'd like to ask you a few questions before we pray. I'd like to ask you what exactly does it mean to you to be a Torah keeper? What does it mean to be righteous? Have you lost your mark? Have we as the people of Yahweh lost our way? Have we become a religious people instead of a righteous people? You know, brothers and sisters, the walk of the Sadiq is not what many think it is. And I pray that as you join me for this teaching, that you will come to understand what it really means to be a Sadiq, what it really means to be a Torah keeper, what it actually means to be a Torah observant person. And what does Yahweh desire from us? Does He desire for us to be a religious person? Or does He desire for us to give all that we are to Him? I know that many of you will jump up and say, Yeah, He he desires our heart. But are you then giving all of your heart to Him? Brothers and sisters, we are entering into a time where there is going to be a great distress upon this earth. Where our hearts, brothers and sisters, are going to be tested. Where our very core of our of our being, who we actually are, is going to be put to the test. And I pray in the name of Yeshua that you will stand the test of time and that you will no longer be just a religious person, but that you will learn to be a Sadiq, a righteous person who radiates their King. So brothers and sisters, before we start, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today in the name of Yeshua that we can come together like this. Father, that we can get around your word. And Father, that we can come and, and hear what it is that you are wanting to say to us. And Father, I pray that each and every person that is tuned in, that has come to listen to this teaching, Father, that it won't just be words, Father, spoken, but that it will be words that penetrate into their heart by the power of your Ruach. And Father, that they will evaluate their lives, that they will that they will look into their own hearts today, Father, and ask themselves the question, why do I do what I do? What is the reason behind me doing what I'm doing? Am I doing it for selfish gain or am I doing it to bring glory and honor to my King? Father Yahweh, I pray in Yeshua's name, may your Ruach, Father, lead and guide every single thing that is said. And Father Yahweh, I pray a blessing over each and every person that has joined me. And I pray, Father, that they will grow up and mature and become, Father, the true radiance of your Son Yeshua upon this earth. So Yahweh, we thank you for this time and we honor you. In Messiah Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, if I had to ask you to evaluate your life, I know that many of you after this question, you would jump up and say, no, but, but I, I, I see myself as, as, as this, not that. And the question I like to ask you is, would you consider yourself to be a wheat or a tear? Would you consider yourself to be a religious person or would you consider yourself to be a righteous person? And you know, so many people would jump up so quickly and say, oh, but you know what? I consider myself to be a wheat and I, I, I'm doing all that I can to really be that wheat. Are you? Are you really doing all that you can today so that you can be the righteousness of Elohim upon this earth? You know, Yeshua spoke clearly in this specific parable that both the wheat and the tares were to remain and grow up together as we heard in the previous teaching. But that there would come a time when he would send out his messengers to gather the darnel and to bind them into bundles to be burned in the fire. Whereas the wheat would be gathered into the barn. And you know, every time that I look at, at wheat and tares, I, I come to realize something. A weed, which is a tear, it stays up straight. Whereas the wheat, when it matures, it bends down. Brothers and sisters, isn't that what Yeshua said? He said, humble yourself in the sight of Yahweh and I shall lift you up. Those that are mature, they humble themselves in the presence of the King. They don't walk around with arrogance as so many believers are doing today. You know, in the last teaching, we came to see that there's going to be a great apostasy from the true faith in the days before Messiah Yeshua's return. Why? Because man will turn from the one true Elohim, just as was spoken throughout the prophets and was spoken throughout the, 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 the writers of the New Testament. They continually said that these things would happen. And you know, I sat thinking about this and praying. And as I did, the Father began to speak to me about the condition of His body. You know, some believers are happy, as I've said over and over, to just be saved. And they have absolutely no desire for a deeper relationship with Abba Father. And it's to you that I feel, brothers and sisters, that this message is directed from the hand of Abba Father and from His very mouth to your heart. The body of Messiah, 
the body of Messiah Yeshua is sick. They are sick to the point of death and decay. Do not be fooled, brethren, in thinking that things are fine when in, re in reality they actually are not. We need to get the clear perspective and we need to see through the eyes of Messiah Yeshua. We need to have discernment and not be pushed around by every wind of doctrine. As many of you know, I've been teaching on the end time remnant of Yeshua for some time. And for some, this message has struck a chord of hope within you and it has awakened a deep passion for His will in your life. And it's to you that the words have become words, I believe, of hope as you have taken the message to the foot of Yeshua's throne. And I believe that you have not only just taken it, but you have taken it and begun to question these things by Him. Yet for others, there is absolutely no change. You have heard, but you do not listen. And you are those that Yeshua spoke of when He said throughout the New Testament and in the book of Revelation, He says, He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. To you, you do not hear at all. Because you become stubborn and stiff-necked. You know, over and over Yeshua has been warning and He's been speaking to His body and He's been saying that we need to make Teshuvah, that we need to repent and that we need to return to Him with all of our hearts, not just our intellectual brains, but with all of our hearts and all of our minds. And Yeshua continually has warned of double-mindedness. People who sit on the fence, those who are not hot nor cold. They continue to set their sights on idols of self. And he continues to call and he continues to, to, to resound the gong. And he continues to say that we need to be people who change our hearts and our minds. And that we need to make teshuva of all the things that have separated us from him. Brethren, the clock is ticking and many people are sleeping. They are sleeping. The question is, when will they awaken? When will we listen to His voice that is calling to each and every one of us? Whether you know Him today for five days or whether you know Him for 25 years, He's calling to you and He's asking you, when will you be counted in this generation? When will you rise up? When will you make a stand for the injustice that is going on upon this earth? My wife put it to me so, so Elegantly, if I have to put it that way. So she said it, but it was not only elegant, it was profound, is a better word. We are supposed to be partnering with Yahweh for the causes of righteousness upon this earth. Yes, he could do it with a flick of his finger. But he chose you and I to stand in partnership with him. Yet the army of Yahweh is fast asleep. So many people, brothers and sisters, are... Are, are, are covered in spiritual leprosy by the things that they say and the way that they gossip about others. And the question I'd like to ask you today is why? Oh, why do you stand by when you see injustice and falsehood happening all around? Maybe even in your own congregation. Why, have you, why? why are we so, so, so easily swayed? And then instead of standing up for the righteousness of our king, we seem to regress and we seem to go in the corner and we seem to, to stand by and say, oh, but it's not my problem. Where are the Pinchases? Where are they? When will Yahweh's true army stand up and partner with him for the cause of in, injustice, against injustice, and stand up for his righteousness? Brothers and sisters, I've been saying it over and over and over. I said it and I'm going to continue saying it. The message of Elijah is here. Elijah stood up for what was right in a generation of decay. He partnered with Yahweh and he spoke what needed to be said. That message of Elijah is here and it's going to sound continually until the day of Yeshua's return. Why? Because Yahweh loves us and he wants us to change our ways. We need to understand this. That the message of Elijah is going to be directed to the house of Israel first. As it says, brothers and sisters, in Peter chapter 4 verse 7, it says the following. In, I believe it's in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 17. I might be incorrect, but check me on it. 
It says the following, Because it is time for judgment to begin from the house of Elohim. And if firstly from us, can you imagine this? If first with those who profess to be wheat, to be righteous, to be holy, to be pure, to be walking in his ways. Then what is the end of those who do not obey the good news of Elohim? If it begins with us first, how is it ever going to be possible for the rest? Brothers and sisters, we need to understand something. That that very scripture that I just read to you, brothers and sisters, was not only for those days of Peter. It is now alive and it is being executed in our very day. Why? Because there is a great calling out happening. And it's happening to those who have ears to hear. They have heard the call of Yeshua. They are no longer standing by saying, hey, you know what, it's not my problem. They're saying it is our problem. And we need to get busy with Yahweh's work. Like I said, I've been preaching this message to those who will hear. Maybe you're one of those that have listened and you, you want to get busy. It's now the time. But yet on the other side of that coin, I see others that are so fast asleep. And what they, that what they say with their mouths and what they keep on doing, it doesn't line up with Yahweh's word. It's kind of they have this attitude of, oh, tomorrow I'll repent. Tomorrow I'll make right. Oh, I'll just wait for the festivals so that I can get my life in order. There is no more time to live like that. These people think that they have all the time in the world. The problem, the problem is not time, brethren. The problem is your heart. These kind of people cannot change. Why? Because they are stubborn and stiff-necked just like those in the days of Israel's history. When Elijah had to rise up, where Yahweh raised, raised him up. Why? To be a mouthpiece against the people that were stubborn and stiff-necked. There are so many people today, brothers and sisters, they are stubborn and stiff-necked. They are caught up in the knowledge and the practice of Torah. They are so caught up in the practice and the knowledge of Torah, but they've forgotten their first love. They've forgotten the fire of Messiah Yeshua. The day that they got saved, they encountered that and they've drifted so far away from it that it's almost foreign to them. Yeshua says that such people have become rich on their religion, yet they are poor and empty. Why? Because they absolutely have nothing to offer from their own spiritual life that has been found in Messiah Yeshua. All they can offer is knowledge. But they cannot, they cannot offer the power of Messiah Yeshua that brings change in people's lives. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 speaks about such people. It says, And to the messenger of the assembly of Lydosia write, the Amen, the trustworthy, and the true witness, the beginning of all of the creation of Elohim says this. Now he says it. He says, I know your works. I know that you are neither hot nor cold. You're slipping around. You cannot make up your mind whether you want to be for the enemy or whether you want to be for Yahweh. You're sitting on the fence. Then he goes and he says, I would that you were cold or hot. So because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. And I've said this before. In order for Yahweh or in order for Yeshua to vomit something out of his mouth, that means that they had to be in him first. They were part of his body. These people believed, but they become useless. They are neither cold nor hot. They've absolutely become good for nothing because they cannot make up their minds on what they need to do and how they need to serve the Father. The problem is in their hearts. And the problem is they have become boastful and filled with pride. So he says, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. Why? Because you say, rich I am. Haven't you heard this before? And I am made rich. Why? I am made rich by my knowledge. And I need none at all. I don't need anybody to tell me. I don't need anybody to correct me. I don't need a word of prophecy. I don't need a word of correction. I don't need these things. All I need is my knowledge. Because I have it all. But Yeshua says to them, He says that you, such people, 
do not know that they are actually wretched and pitiable and poor and blind. They have no spiritual discernment. To be blind means you cannot see the things of Yeshua. Yet he continues and he says they're naked. We are supposed to be clothed with the righteousness of Elohim, the righteous garments of truth. These people don't even have those garments on, yet they walk around as if they do. Then he goes on and he says, I advise you, him, not me, Yeshua himself says this. He says, I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been refined in the fire. Who is the one that refines the gold? It is Yeshua himself. Then he goes on and he says, so that you become rich and white garments, garments of righteousness is what we are supposed to buy from him so that we become dressed, so that the shame of your nakedness might not be shown and anoint your eyes with ointment so that you see, get some spiritual discernment through my Ruach. And then he goes on and he says, as many as I love, I reprove and discipline. Now some people will listen to this message and it will be too hectic for them. Why? Because they won't see the love of Messiah that he needs to reprove us. Because we are supposed to be his children. Brothers and sisters, I've told you and I've said it over and over that many people are only believers. They lack the qualities to be a true disciple. They are not willing to count the cost to be a true disciple. These people, brothers and sisters, are still worldly and fleshly. They keep Torah, but they are unwilling to die to self and thereby to trade in their life for his life. Now you might be saying, Brother Yosef, what do you mean? You see, if you take a look at this passage that we just read, it says that we are to buy gold from him. The gold that has been refined in the fire that only he has. Yeshua himself says, buy this gold from me. You see, brothers and sisters, you cannot expect to buy this kind of gold with things of this world. It's only when we trade in our wills, our wills, our stubborn wills, our lives for his. That's when we get a spiritual inheritance. That's when we get the currency that we need to buy this gold of everlasting life. This gold that will always remain. And we buy it from Yeshua. This then begs the question, and I'd like to ask the question to each and every one of you today. Why do you keep Torah? Don't look at me. Don't look at your husband, your, your daughter, your brother, your family members. Look at yourself and ask yourself the question, why do I keep Torah? You know, many people today say with a proud attitude that they keep Torah. And truth is that to keep Torah according to Yahweh is really nothing at all like many today would have you think it is. You see, brothers and sisters, when we look at Scripture from Genesis all the way through, we come to see that the true Torah is our walk of faith. The true Torah lifestyle is a walk of faith. That then begs the question, what then is true faith? Brothers and sisters, I believe that true faith is taking Yahweh at His word. Taking Yahweh at His word. Applying His word to our lives on a continual basis. Living it out through faith. You know, the scriptures say that the true Torah is for us a mirror. And you know, if you've ever seen a goldsmith, then you'll know that there is a great process that has to take place before the gold is ready to be made into a solid bar for export. It's from out of the ore that comes great impurity, impurities called dross. And you know, the process to, to remove the dross is a long process. It's a process involving tremendous heat. And you know, brothers and sisters, the difference with gold and us as humans is that when the heat is applied to you and I, we tend to jump out of the pan. We get out and we don't want to go further in the refinement process. Why? Because it's burning. Many people will ask the question, but why? 
Why does this have to happen? It has to happen. Why? Because our Father wants to purify us in this very life that we live. Why? So that we might become more like His Son and become the righteousness of Elohim upon this earth. Partnering with our King. Doing the Great Commission. Praying for the sick. Speaking words of encouragement into our brothers and sisters' lives. Building up the body of Messiah Yeshua until they all come to the perfection of the saints. Spiritually mature. So that the army of Yahweh can stand. You know, when you continue to look at this whole scenario of the gold being refined, what actually happens is the goldsmith heats the gold till it becomes a liquid. And as heat is applied, the impurities rise to the top, to the surface. And you know, many of us go through the first fire. But as soon as the first layer of impurities have come to the top, that's when we think we're done. But truth is that this is a process. And it's a process that is supposed to happen much more than just once. The goldsmith heats the gold till all the impurities have been removed. And eventually what happens is that he can see his own image, his reflection in the liquid. Yeshua wants to see his reflection in you. That's what he wants. And this is the purpose of Torah. It is for us a mirror. A mirror reflecting who we are now as people who have been redeemed and made anew by the finished work of Messiah. And you know, both James, Yaakov, and Rabbi Sheol, they understood well this concept of the Torah being a mirror. In James chapter 1, verse 22, it says the following. It says, but be doers of the word. That is what we're supposed to be doing, doers of the word and not hearers only. Because if we are only going to be hearers, we are deceiving ourselves. So many people today are continuing to year to year to year, but they are not becoming doers of Yahweh's word. Going out into a world that is so filled with so much injustice and praying that they can be a light. Instead, they choose teachers that they want to follow. And they sit behind their computer screens and they remain there. It's a dangerous place. In this final generation, if you're going to remain there, it's going to be a totally dangerous place. Brothers and sisters, we are to do what the Word says. And when we do it, that's when we are living out the Torah. Because Yaakov understood it like this. Take a look at what he says in the next verse. In James chapter 1, verse 23, he says the following, For if anyone is a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. Now the question is, do you actually see what Yaakov is saying to us? You see, when we read the Torah and then do not do what it says, that's when we have looked at our own face in a mirror and then we've gone away and we've actually forgotten what we look like. Brothers and sisters, the word of Yahweh is that mirror. It is the mirror in which we see. It is the mirror in which we are supposed to look into. And it's when we look into it that we begin to see what we actually look like. Because we are supposed to weigh our lifestyle up according to his Torah. That is what behavior would be consistent with who we are now. What are, what are now those, basically what Paul is saying. He says, he says is, our, is our behavior consistent with the things that are found within the Torah? Are we fulfilling the word of Yahweh? Are we becoming the righteousness of Yahweh in Messiah upon the earth? Are we really doing that? Brothers and sisters, we need to remember something. Yahweh doesn't want robots. And he's not interested in how well you can keep all the commandments. You see, when Yahweh looks from heaven, he's not looking in judgment towards our Torah obedience only. As so many people would think, he's not only just looking for your Torah obedience. Yes, that is one of the most important things that we do the Torah. Yes, we must. But that is not the only thing that he's going to judge. Because he doesn't desire us to be robots who blindly obey just to obey. Right in the beginning in the Garden of Eden, he gave to us free will. 
So plainly, when we look at this whole scenario, then we need to ask the question, what actually does he want? What Yahweh wants is us. He wants you and me. He wants you in totality. He wants every single part of you. Your mind, your soul, your body, your thoughts, every single part of you, he wants for his kingdom, for his purposes. He wants you in totality. He wants our life totally, fully, completely. Yahweh wants your heart, your soul, and your devotion. He doesn't need our service. Think about that. He doesn't need it. He is Elohim. He doesn't need our service, but he desires our devotion. He desires our hearts. He desires you. Likewise, he doesn't get a thrill from our obedience when it doesn't come from our hearts. When we are obeying Torah from the heart and we have fully committed all we do to Abba Father from our hearts, then that's when we are able to walk by faith and not by sight. We need to understand that to live out the true Torah can only be done by faith and rest in that complete work of Messiah Yeshua. It isn't the actions that we do and what we do concerning or, or, or in our lives that kind of earn us points in heaven. That's not what happens. It is our heart condition that is most important to our King. I believe that what pleases Him is the fact that our souls and our very life have been yielded to the Almighty. Because Yahweh wants us to submit our life totally to Him. Then do His Torah by faith. You see, brothers and sisters, that is the essential difference between obeying and submitting. You see, from our love of Yahweh should come our submission to His mitzvot, should come our, our, our desire to want to do His commandments. Furthermore, we need to understand that the commandments are a means to an end and not the end itself. And I'll explain that as we go on. You see, we have perverted the true Torah, and Paul summarizes it perfectly in Romans chapter 10 by showing how man has changed Yahweh's Torah into a system of works by which he believes he can now establish his own righteousness. Let me say that again. We have perverted the true Torah, and Rabbi Sheol summarizes it perfectly in Romans chapter 10 by showing how man has changed Yahweh's Torah into a system of works by which man believes he can establish his own righteousness. You see, the fact of the matter remains that it's not enough to just follow Torah. We are to submit to Yeshua and allow Him by His Ruach to transform us from the inside out. He wants to allow His reflection, brothers and sisters, to shine out of your life. And you know, once again, James, Yaakov, he understood this because he wrote the following in James chapter 4 verse 7. And so many people have misunderstood what he said. He said, submit yourselves therefore to Yahweh. We need to first submit to Yahweh, then resist the enemy. So many people are sub trying to resist the enemy, but they are not submitting themselves to Yahweh. And the enemy is running circles around them. Submit yourselves therefore to Yahweh. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Then he says, draw near to Yahweh and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Isn't that exactly what it said in Revelation? Because you are neither hot nor cold, that's the same as being double-minded. You see, when we are submitted, that's when we do what is required. And that's when we recognize and do what Yahweh desires. And we do it by faith. You know, brothers and sisters, we know that Scripture tells us over and over that one of the reasons for Messiah's coming was to bring Israel back to the heart of the Torah. And you know, it's one thing not to physically commit a sin, while it's another to walk in purity. The difference is the condition of the heart. It is, it is the heart, brothers and sisters, that causes us to walk in purity. 
If we don't guard our hearts, we'll soon begin to doubt our actions and become trapped by doing only what is required of us. I'll only do as much as what is needed instead of going the extra mile. And again, I'm going to say it. Yahweh doesn't just want your actions. He wants your entire life. He wants all of you. And the scriptures have an answer for those who would question what is required of them as a believer in this kingdom of their king. And it's found in Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And it says the following. It says, Israel, what does Yahweh your Elohim require of you? But to fear Yahweh your Elohim, to walk in all his ways. Then it says, and to love him and to serve Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul. Now, I'd like us to notice that walking in his way and observing the commandments as well as loving Yahweh with all of your heart, they are equal in this passage. They are not one above the other. So what is he actually saying? What he's saying is that what Yahweh requires is that he requires all that we are, every single part of us. In the book of Micah, chapter 6 and verse 8, we read another passage that says, What does Yahweh require of you but to do justly, to do righteousness, to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly, like I said in the beginning, like the wheat that bows down in the presence of the king, so we are supposed to be humble in his sight and to walk humbly, not arrogant, humbly with our Elohim. Humbly with our Elohim. You see, brothers and sisters, if our heart's condition is right before Yahweh, It is as if we are obeying all of the commandments. Why? Because we will be obeying His voice. And we will be doing what He tells us to do. I believe that when our heart is right, that we will automatically desire to keep all of these commandments. And it won't be a burden for us at all. But we will be doing it from the right attitude. Another passage of scripture that really speaks to us is found in Matthew chapter 22, 38 to 40. It says, you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hinges, hangs all of the Torah and the prophets. Brothers and sisters, it hinges. All of Yahweh's Torah hinges on those two commandments. Without them, without doing those, the rest will all fall apart. And in actual fact, this verse is actually corresponding with the previous passage that I read to you in Micah. Brothers and sisters, so many of you might might question this next statement. But hear me out. We need to understand that the keeping of Torah is not the goal of our walk with Messiah. And you know, many today have left the church and have become Torah observant, yet they have forgotten that the Torah is, is a marker. It's a signpost to the goal, which is Messiah Yeshua. You know, my wife put it to me in a great way the other day. She said that Rabbi Shul speaks and, and he spoke about the body. And we need to think of Yeshua as that complete body. And the above two commandments would be the heart. Without the heart, everything else will fail. Without the heart, everything else will fail. You see, we have been called, brothers and sisters, to walk in holiness. And by walking in the holiness and walking in purity, we are are supposed to be walking in the righteousness too. Yet like I began this teaching, I'd like to ask the question, what does that really mean? You know, many today have a false definition of what righteousness actually means. And because of this wrong definition, they seek the works the works of Torah. They seek the works to justify the way they live. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to ask you a question. What is righteousness? What does it mean to be righteous? How is righteousness fulfilled then in you and I? You know, whenever this type of question is posed to people, most people give an automatic response. And most people will say, oh, but to be righteous means to be in right standing with Yahweh. But then the question posed, what does it mean then to be in right standing? And many people look with a puzzled face because they don't really understand what it means to be righteous. Brother Harold Smith makes the following statement regarding righteousness. 
He says this, The righteousness spoken of in Scripture originates from the Hebrew word, as many of us know, tzedekah, which is derived from Isaiah chapter 33, 14 to 16. And its definition means restitute, virtue, and justice in behavior. Let me say that again. Its definition means restitute, virtue, and justice in behavior. In the Greek, righteousness is translated from the word, the Greek word, which actually means integrity, virtue, purity of life, rightness, correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. The condition which is acceptable to Yahweh. That's what the Greek definition means. And we see in these definitions from both the Hebrew and the Greek that righteousness is actually synonymous with virtue. He put it another way and said, it's the inherent power, the power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. That's a powerful definition. The inherent power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. And you know what I found very interesting, brothers and sisters, is that when we look at all of this, it's actually from this Greek word, dynamis, which is that Greek word where we, where we get the, the virtue from. It is from this Greek word dynamis, or, or, or pardon me, dikaisoni, dikosoni, where, where the word dynamis is derived. And the English word dynamic comes from that Greek word, as well as dynamo. Now, in several places in Scripture, we read and we see the following, that it was within Messiah Yeshua that, that, that power flowed out of him. It was the power of the Ruach that, that so many times we see that it was a dynamic power was the power of the Ruach in his life that, that healed and, and delivered people from bondage. And this power that was within him, it was accredited to him through his virtue, through his character, through the pure life that he lived. Mark chapter 5 verse 30 as well as Luke chapter 6 verse 19 tell us that. You see, the virtue that Messiah Yeshua embraced and lived out before us is the example of the manner of behavior by which we also acquire the same virtue. You see, righteousness is a virtuous state of being that allows each and every one of us, as we walk in the, in the holiness and purity, that's why it says, blessed are the pure in heart. Why? For they shall see Yahweh. Because righteousness is a virtuous state of being that allows you and I to come into the presence of the Father without being consumed. Furthermore, brothers and sisters, righteousness is a choice we make in our manner of behavior, as an act of our will. You see, righteousness is not something that falls upon us simply. Why? Because we mouth a couple of commandments or we mouth a couple of verses that we know well or we, or we tend to be a religious person. No. You see, virtue or righteousness is cultivated in our life by our actions, by our thoughts, by the way that we live, what we do behind closed doors. This is the same as it was in Yeshua's life. Yeshua's life, brothers and sisters was characterized by what he did. You know, what Yeshua did by his sacrifice was not to relieve us of any further action on our part, but to open the door of empowerment to us through which we might be able to fulfill the righteous requirement of the law, the righteous requirement of the Torah, and thereby be able then to stand in the presence of Yahweh prior to which the weakness, brothers and sisters, the weakness of the flesh had prevented us from accomplishing. You see, brothers and sisters, this power, this power is found when we are mikvah immersed into Him and when we are filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, something that is lacking in the body of Messiah today. Just like we said previously, people don't have spiritual discernment. Why? Because the places that they find themselves in is filled with leprosy. You see, brothers and sisters, we need to understand something. The Greek word for power in John chapter 1, verse 12, if you go and read it, is ekosia. We've spoken about this word before. It is actually the power of choice. We need to choose what is right. We need to choose what is good and pleasing and perfect. You see, just because the door is open, just because we have stepped in through, through that salvation gate, that does not mean that what lies behind 
as we have seen in the teaching of the tabernacle, that which lies beyond is automatically attained. No. You and I still need to make choices. We need to choose to walk through the door. We need to choose to embrace what is on the other side. We need to choose to embrace Messiah Yeshua with all our heart, mind, and soul. As I began this teaching, and as we saw in the scripture found in Revelation, where those people don't want to buy gold from Messiah Yeshua, and they are not clothed in the garments, the pure garments. You see, the scriptures tell us over and over that we are to be clothed in righteousness, that we are to put on the righteousness of Elohim, that we are to put on the armor, we are to put on Messiah Yeshua. We must put it on. We must put on the righteousness that we are to be clothed in, and we must put it on like a garment. Ephesians 6, 11 to 18, Isaiah 59 tells us this. We are to put it on as a garment and we are never to take it off. But so many people don't have those garments on. Why? Because they're double-minded, as James says. I urge you to listen to the garments of war if you haven't already. Messiah Yeshua is saying to each and every one of us that we need to choose on a daily basis hourly basis for some of you it might even be minutes you need to choose continually to walk in the ways of Abba it's a daily pardon me a daily decision you need to put on Messiah Yeshua when we do this brothers and sisters we rise to the occasion and we begin to grow up into sons and daughters of righteousness. This has to be a lifestyle. And one, it's a lifestyle, brothers and sisters, that needs to be cultivated so that we may radiate the truth of our King and the righteousness of Elohim upon this earth. You see, we make a sacrifice of righteousness by doing something our fleshly desires would not ordinarily propel us to choose to do. That is why David continually said, if it doesn't cost me something, then I won't do it. Our worship shouldn't be something that, 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 that we just do for 10 or 20 minutes a day. It should cost us something. It should be something that we, that we get down and we get gritty about. Brothers and sisters, we do not proclaim faith in the Messiah to become righteous. No, we exhibit the manner of the faith of the Messiah. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We are supposed to be revealing His character upon this earth. The faith of the Messiah was the same as the faith of Abraham. They both heard the voice of the Father speak and they both exhibited their belief that He would accomplish what He said He would do with His subsequent actions of obedience by their behavior. You see, it was the faith demonstrated by their actions that was accounted to them as righteousness. I hope you're beginning to understand this message. You see, by aligning our deeds in the same manner as Messiah Yeshua did, by fashioning our life after those admonitions given to us in the Torah, our actions can then be measured against the life Yeshua led among us as an example of how we are to be acceptable, to be righteous in order to come into the presence of Yahweh. It's in the presence of Yahweh that there is fullness of joy. Remember Yeshua said, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. We need to be conforming to his character, to his life, to his, to his will. You know what's interesting is that there is no Hebrew or Greek word for right standing. To rightly stand in his presence means to come as, become as he is. In other words, to become as light. To stand in His presence means to walk uprightly. We need to be walking uprightly in our thoughts, in our actions, in what we say. And uprightly comes from the Hebrew word tamim, a word that we have used so many times, which means to be complete, to be whole, entire and sound, to be, to be complete, spiritually mature. And interestingly, out of the 91 times this word tamim appears in Scripture, it is translated as uprightly only eight times. And an overwhelming majority of times, Tamim is translated without blemish. 44 times is perfect. Pardon me. Without blemish, it is translated 44 times and perfect 18 times. 
And of these 91 appearances, only once does it show up in the New Testament in Galatians chapter 2, verse 14. So when we speak of being in right standing with Yahweh, we know that the instruction, the description of what it means to walk uprightly before the Father is found where? It is found in the Torah, in the book of His instructions. That is where we really learn what it means to be a priest in the order of righteousness, to be tamim. Yet so many people today disregard His Torah. Brothers and sisters, when we love Yahweh with all our heart, that's when we will do justly. That's when we will do the works of righteousness. When we love Him with all our soul, that's when we will view others with the same compassion and we will show them the same love and mercy as Messiah Yeshua did. And when we love Him with all of our mind, we will keep our mind upon Him and then we will walk humbly by His Spirit, not arrogantly. Brothers and sisters, Yahweh wants your heart. He wants all of us. His desire is for His people to submit to His will, to take hold of Him. And you know, that will is only revealed in His Torah. To obey the Torah without giving our heart to Yahweh is great loss. To submit to the Almighty and seek to walk in obedience to the Torah is great gain. So in conclusion, I would like to refer back to the statement I made about being Yeshua-like or Torah observant. In Romans chapter 10 verse 4, pardon me, 4, Rabbi Shul uses the Greek word teleos, and we've spoken about this word before, to convey that the objective or goal of the Torah, the aim or the purpose of it, is to point us to the mind and character of the Messiah. Go and read it in Galatians chapter 4.19, Philippians 2 verse 5. Brothers and sisters, Messiah Yeshua, the living word of Yahweh, is the perfect mirror or replica of what Yahweh's Torah teaches. He points us the Torah points us, pardon me, the Torah points us to his character and work. And, and it's in the aim of getting us to be Yeshua-like, to get us to be a true Torah-observant person who radiates Yeshua in all we do. Brothers and sisters, I urge you to hear me out in this last statement. You and I, we are not in our eagerness to learn Torah and I break roots, go headlong and land up going backwards instead of forwards. We need to remember that Torah is the signpost to the goal and that goal post is Yeshua. You know, many today have found the signpost, yet they have set up camp and they no longer they no longer want to learn. They no longer want to mature. They no longer want to move into the new thing that our Father is doing upon this earth. Faith, brothers and sisters, in Torah alone is dead. We need to wake up. We need to, we need to search our hearts and ask ourselves, why do we do what we do? Are we living the life of a Sadiq? Are we walking this road so that the world out there might know whose we are are we are we children of the light or are we children of the darkness are we ready to stand up for the righteousness of our king are we willing to partner with him in these last days that's the question that he's asking you let's pray Father, we bless you today and we thank you. Father Yahweh, I pray in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Father, I pray by your spirit that you will go forth. And Father, that you will speak into the hearts and lives of every single person. Father, I pray that they will no longer just do this, Father, out of a religious heart, but that they will do it out of a sincere, a contrite, a pure, a holy heart. A heart that is seeking after you. A heart that wants to see your righteousness and justice revealed upon this earth. Father, I pray that through their lives, Abba Father, that you will be able to flow through them in a powerful way. And Father, that their character shall be formed into the character of Messiah Yeshua. Father, that they will be filled with compassion and love and mercy, but that at the same time that they will stand up for justice 
and righteousness in this generation. Father, we thank you and we bless you for this time together. I pray, Yahweh, that you bless and keep each and every one of your children. In Messiah Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me and I pray in the name of Yeshua that you will consider subscribing to this channel. By subscribing, you help us to get these teachings out to more people and we are so grateful for your help in helping us to get Yahweh's word out. We'd also like to invite you to head over to www.treasuredinheritanceministry.com. The link is below where you can get all of these teachings in PDF format and you will be able to download the unedited notes and study it out for yourselves and also find all of our other teachings and more about our ministry and what we do um, on that website. So again, thank you for joining me. I pray that you will go forth as a mighty warrior in this final generation and that you will learn that we are to live the life that Yeshua lived in all that we do. We shall not and cannot any longer be people who only speak the words and not live the life. May you become Tamim in this generation and may you walk the walk of a Sadiq. Be blessed in Yeshua's name. Shalom. Thank you.